If you were an enthusiast in the late 60s, uh, you didn't have a lot of choices in what you could drive. On the one hand, there were sports cars, little two-seaters, many of them British, things like Triumph and MG, and there were the Italian Alfa Romeos, for example. Um, on the other end, there were muscle cars, cars with big V8 engines that came out of Detroit. A lot of power, but very much straight-line performance. Luxury cars, as we knew them in those days, were defined by Cadillac and Lincoln. So, for the most part, cars were big, cars were wallowy. There was um, perhaps a little bit of growing concern about environmentalism, growing concern about fuel efficiency. And also, we had uh, lots of interest left over from the 50s and the 40s even, with European cars and German cars eventually. So, enthusiasts had their choices of you know, either a small two-seater sports car or a big muscle car, but nothing kind of in the middle that combined the, a little bit more size and practicality with the sports car-like agility. And that's where BMW came in and filled that, that vacant spot. I was finishing school at the time, and I was getting ready to buy my first new car. And only months from that, the, this David E. Davis article in Car and Driver in 1968 came out, Turn Your Hymnals to 2002, and he raved about this car. Now, interestingly enough, it wasn't just that a 2002 was new and somewhat unknown. The name BMW was almost totally unknown in the U.S. market at the time. So it wasn't just that people said, what's a 2002? They said, what's a BMW? It was absolutely revolutionary. And it turned BMW around completely and laid down the track that BMW has been running on ever since. It's just an incredibly good little car that had the effect of startling every single person who got in and drove it for the first time. I drove that car up into the Ramapo Hills. The drive through the hills and then the drive back into Manhattan, it was just sensational. And I was high as a kite and thought about it for a while and thought, you know, I gotta write about this while it's fresh on my mind. I think the 2002 came into that environment and really showed that a small car really could have even better performance, could be more agile, more nimble, and really kind of change people's perceptions about what a performance car is. I think everybody looks back and points to that article as, you know, the one piece that really put BMW on the map in the U.S. When BMW of North America started business in 1975, the 2002 accounted for about 90% of our sales. The sports sedan has captured the heart of the American public, and that's helped to create a whole category of its own in the United States. When the 2002 was introduced, I think that that introduced the whole country to the new sports sedan, a car that's fun to drive. By definition, a sports sedan is compact, light, agile, yet practical. And the 3 Series does that better than any other sedan on the market. It helped define the concept, and even in its fifth generation, it's still the benchmark. A concept like a sports sedan in the 2002 sort of snuck up and surprised everybody. It was something that was totally unexpected. Well, it's an original. I mean, if you, if you think about the 2002, which is the origins of the 3 Series, everybody who owned a 2002 or had anything to do with them loved the car. I mean, it was wonderful. It was the first really interesting sports car that a young couple could own. In other words, you could have babies and a sports car at the same time. It was a four-seater car embodying pleasures of a sports car. An unpretentious looking little box that you got in and all of a sudden you said, gee, this is great visibility and all the controls seem to fit really well. 
and then it really went. I mean, it accelerated, and it and the brakes were good, and the handling were good, and the whole package. You were really at one with the whole package, and really at one with the environment because the, the visibility was so terrific. If you remember, a lower belt line and great greenhouse on the car, so it was it was a very uh, invigorating and involving experience. The time Detroit was trying to go low and swoopy. The 2002 was a little upright car. Plenty of room, you could see well in all directions. It just looked like it had dropped from another planet. That's our roots. That's where we started. That's where we built our customer base. That's what defined us. Um, and then we expanded our model range upwards and today outwards a little bit more. But the 3 Series is, you know, where we began and that's, that's the core. So the sports sedan was created by the 2002. Um, it's, it's got practicality, it's got a real back seat, um, and I think it's been really the benchmark within the industry to try to replicate that.